reading from our epistle text. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Imagine, if you will, a tree. Not just any tree, but a tree that stands upright and proud. A tree that stands in the midst of the people that were on the earth. A tree that was the center focus of a garden. And on that tree was placed a curse. And the Lord said, you shall not eat of its fruit. Now that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I want you to imagine this because it's not as if you were to eat the fruit and you would know good and evil. Adam and Eve only knew good. That was all that they knew. So the only thing that, w that, that could have been added by eating that fruit is and evil. And yet... That's the very definition that Satan used to trick Adam and Eve, saying you can be like God. You can be like God, and of course he left this part out, if you also know evil. But knowing evil, that it exists, and creating evil, being evil, are two very different things. You can be like God. Basically, Satan was saying, the reason God does not want you to eat from that tree that stands so proudly and humbly in the midst of the garden is because you will be like him. Don't you want to be like God? And on this side of the cross, we can say, yes, we do. We do want to be like God. Righteous, sinless, perfect, and redeemed. But that's not the case, nor was it the question when Satan asked. Don't you want to be like God? I can give you all that and more. All you have to do is eat from this hardy, proud tree. And when I think about that, not in the storybook sense, but in the practical reality sense, I think about this tree not as withered over, but rather I think of it as a proud tree. One that is good for eating. That's what it says in Scripture. She saw that it was good for eating. In other words, this tree was attractive. And oh, my goodness, what, since then, what attraction has done for us as sinners. We're attracted to sin. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sinning is fun. If it wasn't fun, it would be easy to not do it. Like cutting off your own arm. You don't do that because it would be bad. It would hurt. So if sin were not temptuous, there would be no problem. But as it is, it is temptuous. And it even gives you the feeling of 
instant gratitude, which as Americans, we've come to appreciate more probably than we ought. Instant gratification. So here stands this tree. Eve sees that it's good for eating. She has a serpent whispering in her ear to go and eat of it. Because you can be like God. And as soon as she does, she knows evil. And yet she gives it to her husband, Adam. And once he eats it, he knows evil. And all of a sudden, this like God understanding is that of shame. What does it say? They knew that they were naked and they were ashamed. And they went and they hid themselves. They hid themselves from God because not only were they not like God, they realized that what God had promised was going to come true. They were going to die. And just to further your, uh, your absolute understanding of humanity, note that Sin escalated quickly. It went from eating a fruit and being like God, which was the true sin, that of idolatry, to murder in one generation. In one generation. So not only did they know evil, they could commit evil in the most heinous of ways. I can't imagine what it must have been like to be Eve. To have eaten of the fruit and then helped her husband be an accomplice in that. Now please note, I do want to make this point. The first sin was Adam's, not Eve's. Adam should have been there protecting his wife. But he was not. The first sin was a sin of neglect. The first sin was a sin of saying, this is not what I am going to be a part of. This is something that I am not going to be around. Because I promise you, I, I can say it from my point of view as a sinner, if a snake started talking to Ashley, I would kill it immediately. I'd probably kill it anyway. But I would kill it immediately if one started talking. But Adam wasn't around. Where was he? We don't know. What we do know, though, is that Satan was allowed to seduce Eve. And that's the devil's greatest trick. Is his ability to seduce the children of God. He is temptuous. He is not fork-tailed, red, and obvious. He is beautiful. He's even called the sun, or he's even called the morning star. The one who is glorious. And in contrast, Christ is, is, is uh, d defined in Scripture as uh, having no beauty upon him. You see, that, 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 that contrast is, is, is incredible to me. And so here stands this tree. Proud and deadly. Eve reached for the fruit. And as soon as her teeth broke the skin, death entered into the world. I want you to picture in your mind a tree. A tree that stands not so proudly, but certainly erect. 
set in stone. And with that tree set in stone, hangs upon it Jesus Christ. Picture that tree. The tree in which all life comes through. So if death comes through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then the forgiveness of sins comes through the tree of Golgotha, the place of the skull. Now, understanding those two trees, looking at Eve, reaching for the fruit, I can't help but picture Mary reaching up for her son. Does this have to be done? No one in this room has ever suffered the way that Mary suffered. No one. And it was prophesied, a sword shall pierce your soul also. And so we do a disservice to Mary when we call her a vessel. We do a disservice. But as Lutherans, we want to say, well, hang on, hang on, wait, uh, 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 Mary, wait. She's Catholic. No, she's not. She's not Catholic. She's the mother of God. She's the mother of Christ. And so we do a disservice when we call her just a vessel. How many of you mothers consider yourself just a vessel? Thank you for that, by the way. None. Now picture Mary, who bore Christ, who raised Christ, who watched Christ do miracles, who watched Christ go through the trial, who watched Christ be crucified. I can't imagine a mother going through such a thing. But she did, reaching up to a tree that seems bare. No fruit on it. Just her son. But I would like to give you another picture. Imagine a tree. And upon it lays the body of Christ. Another reason why I, I love our center crucifix because Christ is clearly not alive, but he's dead. And I make the argument that even though Mary reached up for Christ with John by her side, that the tree is not fruitless. The tree is full of fruit. In fact, we get to partake of that fruit today. You eat of the tree, you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. You eat of the tree of the forgiveness of sins, where Christ's body has sanctified the cross and who is raised from the dead, you shall live. Christ is our true scapegoat. Scapegoat meaning that we have placed all of our sins onto Christ and sent him off into the desert, or in this point, or in this case, off to a rocky place to die. But oh, the root of Jesse, he does not come back void, he bears fruit. From his wounds grow vines. And from those, from those vines, 
we have the forgiveness of sins. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And so it is right that we celebrate Mary today. It is right that we celebrate Mary not because necessarily that she was well, that, that she was perfect, but rather God looked upon her and said, you shall be blessed. You shall bear my son, the son who is there from the beginning. You will bear my son and, you will, and he will have flesh, flesh that can be tacked to a cross. You will bear my son and because of that, you will be sanctified. You will be blessed. And if that's the case, and it is, what does that say about you? That when the body of Christ touch, touches your lips, are you not sanctified? Are you not blessed? You didn't bear the Son of God but you receive Him. And as long as you receive the Son of God, life everlasting is yours. So behold the tree and give thanks for the empty tomb. But know this, we must always, always, always return to receive the fruit from that tree. The old rugged cross. And when we receive that fruit, forgiven, sanctified, and blessed, and you shall be blessed throughout all generations and into everlasting life. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.